Uh, hello everybody, this is Gabriela. I'm an, at the sex lab, the social ecological simulation and gaming lab. I'm here with Scott and Eric. So you heard well, we're gonna talk about simulation and gaming, which is really cutting edge, you know, something really cool we want to share with all of you. And you'll see how gaming comes into the equation when we study human behavior. So um, we are at, um, at the University of Vermont, and um, so we are part of the Protecting Heart Health uh, project led by Julie Smith, as Tommy was, uh, was saying a moment ago. It's a project um, funded by USDA and led by Julie Smith, a veterinarian here at UVM. And so today, what we, we're, the three of us are going to show you something new, unique. I'm going to, to present, first of all, our simulation model of disease spread, and then Scott will link it to the, the games. He's going to open the, the stage for something really unique and will um, help you understand how games can help us understanding decision making. And then Eric will reveal the, the let's say, what the mechanics behind these games and how the, the data can be used to, to better um, gear up the, the simulation model. So ultimately the goal of, the, of our project is to understand how human behavior and action um, influence the willingness to adopt or to invest in biosecurity and then compliance with biosecurity practices. And ultimately we want to improve human behavior to uh, guarantee um, animal health. In the, in the hog production system. And to do that, so we, we created this simulation model toward disease spread. And we know that scientists have created have really a, a fairly good understanding on the epidemiology that um, causes like disease spread. So the, the biology of a, of a virus, the, the environment that um, influences this, the spread. But especially with the VDB outbreak in 2013-14, it became really clear that humans have a role in the disease spread. And so this is what we want to do today. We want to see how we can account for human behavior and integrate it with uh, epidemiolog uh, epidemiology to create a more holistic view on, uh, on disease spread. So the question we're going to address is uh, in this um, presentation is how does human risk attitude affect the adoption or so the investment and the compliance uh, by, of biosecurity? This um, simulation model that we have created is based on agent-based modeling. You'll see we uh, we created. Um, a system, a swine production system with um, different agents, so action elements somehow, they, and these agents are connected by networks where hogs and feeds move. And then on top of that structure, we put um, the epidemiology of PDB, and ultimately we, were, uh, we added the, we added the biosecurity based on human risk aptitude. And what we want to do with this model is, first of all, visualize the dynamics of disease spread and then understand how the human, human action, human risk attitude influences disease spread. So what you're going to do in the simulation that you'll see in a, in a little bit, I want to prepare you for the moment. We'll see that there, are, there is a region, a geographical region with some um, agents. So, some are producers. When you see a P, it means that it's a producer agent. And the color of the P um, symbol uh, indicates the type of a production facility. It could be farrow to win, wind to feeder, uh, wind to finish. All of these are different colors. Then we have slaughter plants as red buildings. And then feed mills are symbolized by a yellow uh, silos. And then, of course, we want to, to connect them because we know that transportation networks are, play a, a key role in the transmission of PDV. So we have farm-to-farm -farm networks for um, movement of hogs between farms. Then we have the feed mill networks for the delivery of feed, and then the slaughter plants uh, 
network where we have finishing facilities connected to slaughter plants. And so it's really on those uh, networks that we know that PDV mostly moves. And so the disease spread is, um, so we, we added the, the, the epidemiology on top of this movement. And you see that when uh, an agent is clean, it has um, a, a, a green circle around it. And when it becomes infected, the circle becomes red. The probability of becoming infected depends on two factors. First of all, the interaction between the agents. So if I'm interacting with a slaughter plant, I have higher probability of becoming infected than if I interact, let's say, with, a, with another farm. And then the second factor that affects probability of infection is the biosecurity of the agents that are interacting. And this is really where we we put our knowledge about human, um, human risk aptitude. Because that biosecurity of the agents is, um, is modeled in this way. So the population will be distributed on a gradient of risk aptitudes. Some agents will be more risk seekers. Some will be more risk averse. And so, the, for example, the ones that are, that are more risk averse so that, oh no, I don't want to take any risk uh, becoming infected. So they will start with very high biosecurity, while risk seekers will have lower biosecurity. So in this way, we can distribute uh, risk attitude and biosecurity level across the, the population of agents in our, in our model. And then we have two other uh, very important effects. Okay, we are human beings. so. When there is an emergency, there is um, something happening close to us, we respond. So, for example, we respond to disease um, presence in, our, in the system by increasing biosecurity with time. However, because we are also humans, we, if nothing happens for a while or disease is far away, we tend to relax. So, there are these two competing forces that are also simulated in the model. And so there will be this interaction of different behaviors that will give rise to um, the disease spread, but, uh, patterns of disease spread. So before getting to the, to the simulation, uh, how do we apply these type of simulations? We can use them to, to test what if scenarios. And this is a great tool to understand, for example, how human behavior will influence the patterns of disease spread. So we can, for example, say, what if I increase biosecurity on very few targeted uh, agents? And those will have really high biosecurity, and by controlling those, we might be able to control disease spread in the system. Or another scenario could be, what if we can nudge the, the whole human um, the human behavior for the whole system, and so bring all the agents, all the, the producers, feed mills, and um, slaughter plants to a higher biosecurity level, and so overall increase <coughs> biosecurity in the system. How will the disease spread change? So we're ready. We're going to see the simulation. You will recognize the, um, the system of farms in the area here. And then on the right side, we have the panel with uh, a few important boxes. This one um, will allow me to start an outbreak. So I would select randomly a few farms to, to infect, to start the, the infection. And then these other buttons we are, will allow me to select some targeted agents that I can make immune, meaning that they become really risk averse and have maximum biosecurity. And then instead here, I can move the, um, the biosecurity, I can nudge the whole population towards higher biosecurity level. We we'll start the, the simulation with low biosecurity and we'll go, for example, to a, a medium biosecurity for the system. These two uh, graphs will track the number of infected farms through time on the left and then the number of infected pigs uh, on the right. So we're ready. So we're gonna 
play. And so you'll see that I will... Um, okay, so we're, we're starting the, the outbreak here. Okay, so this is moves in the system. Now we, we see how the, the level of biosecurity in the system affects the disease spread. So we are at the strategic level of decision making, kind of. And now I can intervene as a decision maker for the whole system and say, okay, I can increase biosecurity and make one super spreader become immune. And we can see that there is a decrease in the, in the, in the spread of disease. That is not enough in this case. And then I say, okay, what if I can nudge the whole population in the system towards higher biosecurity levels? And then my nudging from low to medium high biosecurity in the system, in this case, we can even control uh, the disease altogether and get rid of it from the, uh, from the, the whole system perspective. Shows basically the importance of having the full picture, so not only what happens on the farm, but uh, the effect of decision making at the at the high level of, uh, of a full system of farms. What is going to happen uh, if it works is that like when I nudge the the whole population, the um, the whole disease is better controlled in just in this simulation. But this it's really um, a way to. Um, I wanted to demonstrate how we can run different scenarios and test uh, possible interven intervention and also test what it means to, to nudge uh, a population of, of, of agents or of producers in a, in a system and have higher biosecurity overall. Okay, so as a, as a reflection and then I'll pass the, the control to to Scott is so the, the important part here is that to make this simulation and this model as realistic as possible, we really need good data on, on human decision making. And so this is where like where how do we do it? How do we collect this human decision data for uh, to make it as realistic as possible? And Scott will tell you about it. 